The retail apocalypse is hitting the U.S. economy right now. We have storefronts like this shutting down all across America. They're getting boarded up. These, these stores, these restaurants, they're going out of business. And what is a troubling sign for the U.S. economy in 2024, it suggests that this recession that many people have been long awaiting, well, it is happening right now. You can see that this was formerly a Boston Market rotisserie chicken restaurant that is shut down. Uh, many of the Boston Market restaurants have shut down all across America. And there's a note here on the door. It says, no trespassing. You can see here as we walk around the building, you can see where the drive through used to be. People used to come down here, order their food, give money in exchange. That's no longer happening because people have now run out of money, everyone. Um, people have run out of money across the U.S. economy. Three years of inflation, three years of crazy high food prices, gas prices, rent, insurance costs is now causing consumers across America to break. And we're going to see even more of these stores shutting down. And in this example, it's a fast food restaurant. And this is one of the industries that's getting hit hardest right now. I'm sure you guys have seen the articles about McDonald's and Wendy's and KFC and Starbucks, all these fast food restaurants are having big, big issues. But unfortunately, everyone, it's not just fast food. And I'm gonna walk you around here in this neighborhood in Florida so you can see some other stores that are now shutting down. And this is all related to the consumer slowdown, everyone. Consumers have cut back their spending. The US Census Bureau just released brand new retail sales data showing that spending grew, by get this everyone, Spending across America grew by 0.1% in May. Very weak sales growth number in April. It declined by 0.2%. And we can see that basically retail sales have not grown over the last two plus years. They've basically been flat for two years in nominal terms and inflation adjusted terms, they're declining. And so I want you to think about that, everyone. I mean, the mainstream media tries to continually tell us that the economy is strong and doing well, yet retail sales are only up 2.8% over the last two years, and they're down minus 6% adjusted for inflation. That doesn't sound very good to me. And ultimately, this is a problem. Because as consumers cut back their spending even more, that's going to lead to less revenue for businesses. And as businesses see declining revenue, they're going to be forced to eventually lay off workers. This is kind of how the economic cycle works, everyone. And a lot of people thought that somehow this economic cycle was different this time. People thought we were gonna dodge a recession in a consumer spending slowdown. You know, they thought magically it just wouldn't happen. There would be a soft landing, but more and more it's becoming obvious that that's not the case. And behind me, this is another example of a restaurant that's having issues. So it's called Tijuana Flats. This is a Mexican restaurant here in Largo, Florida, about 20 minutes from St. Petersburg. Now, I went in here the other day. You, know, you can see this place is obviously open. There's cars in the parking lot. And I had a couple tacos. They were pretty good. But the manager behind the counter, he told me that there's two other locations for Tijuana Flats around here that just closed. They just closed within the last year. And I asked him, why did they close? He said, the sales weren't good. They weren't making any money. And it's not surprising, everyone. I mean, could you imagine being a restaurant owner in this economy with the food inflation? I mean, the cost of your food inputs, whether it's beef or eggs or wheat, uh, you know, went crazy over the last two or three years. And so, you know, that's just higher costs for you as a restaurant owner. At the same time, you know, the wages for uh, restaurant workers have gone up a lot. In states like California, they're putting really high minimum wages for restaurant workers. And so it's just choking off the ability of someone to make a profit owning a restaurant. So inevitably, a lot of them are now closing. The National Restaurant Federation is also reporting on this. And so I view this as kind of like a leading indicator for the rest of the economy. When you see the restaurants starting to shut down, when you see the restaurants struggling, that's a signal of what's going on underneath, that underneath the surface, things are not as good as they appear. But I'll tell you, everyone, one place that is definitely still busy here, you can see in the parking lot, lots of cars, is Publix. Publix is the big grocery chain here in Florida. I'm here around 3 p.m. on a Tuesday. Parking lot is packed. And folks, with how much the cost of dining out has gone up, I mean, more and more people are shopping in grocery stores because it's the only way that many families can put food on the table and not completely break their budget. And even then, it's still really expensive even shopping in a grocery store right now, especially if you're buying meat, everyone. I mean, the cost of meat has gone up like crazy over the last couple of years. And so as the, the costs of what I call essential items 
keep increasing, like food and like rent, they're gonna have less money to spend on discretionary items, like dining out or like um, buying a house, everyone. I mean, buying a house, uh, I know a lot of you watch my channel for housing market coverage. That's one of the most discretionary purchases uh, you could ever make. It's hundreds of thousands of dollars. It's taking on a big mortgage. And I'm gonna show you here in a second what the local housing market is doing here uh, in response to this economic slowdown because it's not good. But before I show you the data on the housing market here, everyone, I wanna show you more of this, this retail apocalypse because you know, it's important to understand the connection between the housing market and the economy and the economy and the housing market. They feed off each other. And so far, you know, the broader economy has been pretty resilient. The unemployment rate has been low. But as retail spending declines, as more retail st stores close, and as we see more and more of this, more and more for lease vacant spaces in retail centers, we're going to see naturally more homeowners be forced to sell their home. Right? Because as the money continues to run dry, as unfortunately more people get laid off, there will be increased pressure among homeowners to convert their house equity into cash equity, particularly down here in Florida, everyone, because Florida is getting hit right now by a wave of forced selling on the housing market due to higher insurance costs, higher HOA costs, particularly a lot of the seniors that live down here in Florida, they can't afford these increases in prices and rents and food. Uh, look at that, everyone, we have another vacant retail bay right here. You know, the seniors especially, they can't afford these higher costs, and you know, it's kind of a sad story what we're seeing right now. A lot of people who've lived in their homes for decades, or their condo units for decades, they're being forced to sell. And those people selling, you know, it's, it's bad for them, but it'll be good for others who are looking to buy. There's the inventory of homes for sale in this area, folks, it's skyrocketed. It's actually tripled over the last year. The prices are now dropping, and I think they're gonna to continue to drop like a rock. Uh-oh, look at this, folks. We got a big corner retail space here, right on the corner. This is like prime real estate in this, uh, in this shopping mall over here. You know, this right here should be uh, occupied. It's not occupied. It's vacant, it's for lease. And so I want you to think about this, everyone. In just like the last block and a half, I've walked you around here, Think of all the vacant retail we've seen. Think of the stores that have shut down. And this is in Florida. This is in an economy that's supposedly one of the best in America, right? The unemployment rate here is lower than the national average. It's sub 3%. But uh, even then, we're seeing the downturn play out. All right, folks, so now I'm in the car. I'm going to take you to a listing here in Florida where there's a pretty big price cut. And uh, we're seeing lots of price cuts now in Florida due to this slowing economy, due to fewer people moving here. Um, and we're seeing the, the number of homes for sale skyrocket. That's really the big change in Florida and many other housing markets in America over the last six to 12 months, as we've seen these inventory levels on the market really start to explode. And when you see the inventory start to explode, I want you to think about what that means, everyone. Like if in your zip code, the number of homes for sale is spiking, data that you can access for yourself on Reventure app after this video, that's a signal of a slowdown in the economy, right? There's fewer buyers coming in to buy, more sellers looking to sell. And that's the prelude often to big declines in prices. And what I fear for this economy here in particular, in Florida and America in general, is that the prices of houses are so overvalued right now by as much as 30, 40% in many areas that it's going to require a significant decline in prices to bring buyers back into the market. And this is the piece to the housing market downturn that I think a lot of people don't understand yet is they think that a uh, quick little correction is going to happen and everyone's going to come back in and it's going to be fine. I don't think so, everyone, especially down here in Florida. I mean, in this zip code, home prices are 50% overvalued compared to long-term norms. So that's going to mean we, we need to see big, big declines in prices before buyers come back in. And oh, by the way, what happens if um, the unemployment rate here in Florida were to double, go from 3% to 6% or go even higher? Well, then that would mean all bets are off here. And um, excuse me, I'm trying to turn into oncoming traffic here. All right, let's, let's make it. We made it. Okay, good. We made it. All right. And so what I want for you guys out there who are watching this, who've you know, maybe been subscribed to my channel for a really long time. I now have over 500,000 subscribers. Started posting to YouTube basically a little over three years ago. So it's been a, it's been a rapid ascent. 
But I know a lot of you have been watching my channel for a long time and you know, you've been waiting for the housing market correction. You've been waiting for some turbulence in the economy to create buying opportunities for, for all of you out there. And I think we're at that inflection point, everyone. And I think this is the positive takeaway from all of this is that there will be increased opportunity in the economy and in the housing market for those who waited and those who were diligent and those who didn't overextend themselves and take on too much mortgage debt or take on too much in general as far as buying real estate or buying other types of assets. Those who uh, kept a fair amount of money in cash and uh, liquid are going to be rewarded over the next couple of years due to uh, better buying opportunities, cheaper home prices. And so that's the positive takeaway. And you know, I think on one hand it is sad that there will be a lot of people in a state like Florida who get burned, who see the equity on their house destroyed, who maybe go into foreclosure or are forced to sell their home because they can't afford the insurance or HOA costs. Those are very sad individual cases. However, there will be people who benefit from that. And I think society as a whole will benefit from a little bit of a housing market reset and an economic reset where prices get cheaper across the economy and housing market. That will be a good thing for society in the long run. It will actually allow a state like Florida to keep growing. Because Florida has been the number one growth state in America over the last five years. Now, why was it number one? Well, it was always affordable. Florida was always an affordable place to live. It is no longer affordable. So now that it's no longer affordable, it's not going to grow as much, right? In fact, Florida is now losing a lot of people. Uh, a lot of people are leaving Florida. Um, and so this is a, a, a positive development, in my opinion. And I would encourage you guys to, to view it that way. I know there's going to be individual people who get hurt, and that is sad. However, we need cheaper prices, everyone. We need cheaper rents. We need insurance costs to go down. We need property taxes to go down, or at least stop going up. And one way to do that is through cheaper home prices. So folks, we got a house for sale right here. Take a look at the for sale sign. You can see this is a three bed, two bath, 1,100 square feet. Now it's on the market for $390,000, which represents around a $60,000 price cut from its original list price at 450. Now that's a pretty big reduction. However, there's a problem. And that's the fact that the price is still way too high. I mean, that's almost $400 a foot for what was like a very light flip in a neighborhood where the median household income is 60 grand. They're gonna have to cut the price by more. And in fact, everyone, if you go to Data on Reventure app, you can see in this zip code, 42% of sellers actually reduced the price in the most recent month, way higher than it was two or three year, years ago, near the highest level of price cuts on record. So I want you folks to think about that. In neighborhoods like this in Florida, we're near the highest level on record, going back seven or eight years, on price reductions. And so that's telling you that the market's turning down. In addition, the inventory levels are absolutely spiking. Uh, for sale inventory has more than doubled over the last year. It's more than quadrupled over the last two years to the highest level that we've seen since 2017, 2018. And so what I would encourage you guys to do, if you're a home buyer or a seller in particular or a realtor, trying to understand the trends in your market, go to www.reventure.app and type in your zip code and immediately look at the inventory trends. Because if you are in a neighborhood like this where the inventory is spiking, that's a signal that prices are gonna drop. And that's a signal that there could also be like a local economic downturn playing out. Uh, that could be one of the things pushing the inventory levels up. In addition, you're gonna to wanna to take a look at the Reventure App home price forecast score for your area. This is a data point we release at Reventure App that combines different data points like inventory, price cuts, days on the market, and lets you know an aggregated score on if home prices are likely to increase or decrease in your market going forward. The average score is 50. If you're below 50, that means it's more likely that prices are gonna drop. You can see in this area, we have scores in the 20s and low 30s. That's a signal of a slowing market, a market downturn. Head to www.reventure.app and sign up for a premium plan. The cost is $39 a month to gain access to all that data. And make sure to hit the subscribe button below so you can get these videos into your inbox each time they're released on YouTube.